charred heart and with the freeze heart and all those that put the wool but they transplanted. They some of them live for a year, some live for a year and a half. But I thought of the courage of would be long. The Lucas, you read about so and so died. A brother so and so died. And you know why? Because man can't do what God does. Didn't God make a unique thing when he made the body? And man made the made the human being. And then what is man that thou art mindful of? And the son of man that thou visited him. But I think about this lady. How she must have been weak. The blood was flowed from her, Brother Marshall. And then when you lose a lot of blood, you become weak. I've heard men tell about they almost bled to death over an accident. And they get so weak, they could just barely think. Hey man, and finally so they got them some help. Give them a blood transfusion. This little woman didn't get a blood transfusion. You know what she got? She got a touch from Jesus. She never let go to the place in God. She never let go. The Bible said that she heard about Jesus. And she made her way into the press. And when she got in that brother Russell, hey man, there was people pushing. There was people shoving. Sort of like it is downtown if they got a sale or over to Kmart when they have the blue light special or like in Christmas time. Hey, now the day right after Thanksgiving when all the people are rushing to the store. That's sort of what the mentality of it reminds me of. The little lady got there and the Bible says that she pressed her way through the crowd. Hey, now he didn't say they knocked her down, but I sort of wonder if they didn't sort of push her aside and she weaved her way through. But the Bible says she purposed it in her heart. If I make a touch, the hem of his garment, I know I'm going to be made whole. And you say, but the name was in the Bible days. The Bible says that God's not changed. He can say yesterday, today, and forever. We don't have to press our way through that crowd. We got to press our way through the flesh and spirit that, that prevail against us and try to hold us back. We got to press against this mind that said, God, don't move like that. Let me tell you, friend, in 2009, God's still the same as he was on the day of Pentecost, as he was in the day and then the Jesus from water in the wine. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He changed his mind. Right. The same thing as right. him. And let me just tell you this. You might not be able to see his literal garment hanging down. But I'll tell you what you can do. You can touch him tonight. You do not have a high priest who cannot be touched by our infirmities tonight. He can be touched. This little woman, Brother Liam, pressed her way into that crowd. The Bible says that Jesus was moving right along with the crowd. The disciples all around. And she pressed her way through. And she got closer and closer and closer. And then Brother Roger, about the time that Jesus was about to get out of grass, she reached out with that little feeble hand. And she just touched the hem of his garment. And immediately that blood stopped. It stopped right there. It didn't flow anymore. Her body was healed. And immediately Jesus wheeled around. And he said, who was it touched me? There was a little woman hunkered down there. And that they looked around. They said, who do? Well, Master, there's people thronging you. Everybody's trying to touch you. They're laying down leaves for you to walk on. Everybody's touching. He said, no, no, fellas. He said, somebody touch me. There's a lot of people come down here crying a little bit. And they touch God. But I tell you, I've seen some folks like Cindy back there that came down this morning. And she touched the hem of his garment. And that precious child got up with victory in her little soul. And God had this. You wouldn't be back tonight. And God, many people have came down to that altar. And they touched the hem of his garment. And they left happy. I'm telling you tonight, mister, the Bible said that woman was healed. Jesus looked at her and he said, woman, thy faith has made thee whole. I don't need Benny Hinn, he's a great man, probably he's done a lot of great work, but I don't need him to get my healing, I don't need rest on part of his healing, I don't need anything, all I need is the word of God, and to obey that word, and to get into the flow of God, and now that goes to the blessing of God, flows one more time in our lives, oh, I've seen people, I've seen them get hungry for God, and and get hungry. People trying to discourage them. People trying to tell them, that ain't for you. That ain't for you. You don't need none of that. But I can tell you one thing. They didn't let go. They held on. They held on. And they held on. And they pressed on. You know, just like that little woman got her healing that night. Just like many in the Bible. Just like Jacob. When he said, I'm not going to let go. Now listen. I, I was studying this this evening. And been planning on preaching this message for some time. But you know, as I studied it, I thought, Jacob's blessing didn't come. Without some pain. 
Brother Mac, a lot of times people think it's because a child of God goes through a storm, maybe on their job or in their home or in their life. They think because there's a storm. Or, or, or first thing, a lot of times people will think when a Christian gets sick, they think, well, they've sinned somewhere. Or some, you know, we got these super spiritual people, and they're always looking. He's done something. Or she's done something now. I'll guarantee you they wouldn't be going through that. Well, you know, they said that about Job, too, but he didn't have to send his life. Right. You're here to me tonight. I ain't let you have them. I'm ready when you hook me back up just a minute. I got lost. I got disconnected here. Oh, yeah. They, they must have been something wrong with him. He never got sick. They must have been, I'll bet you there's something in his life. No, no, no. There's lots of good people tonight that have fought heavy battles of the artillery of the devil. I mean, just because they told him, there ain't no game without a little pain. Amen. Jacob was over there and he would not let go. And that angel, or whatever it was, hey, now I keep coming back to that. Hey, man, whatever it was, he said, let me go. It's coming daylight. He said, I ain't let me go till you bless me. Well, he said, I will. I'll get him let me go. He just tapped him in that fire. And Brother Russell, that old fire jumped out of there and hollered. Oh, that leg. But Brother Tim, he's the first one ever come through there with a few leg. But he said, oh, I'll tell you one thing, you might have knocked my leg off, but I ain't letting go. I'm going to get my blessing. Now we will going to make it. We'll hold on to the hearts of God's all for tonight. The power of God will come through for us. Our healing will come through for us. Our things will come through for us. It doesn't matter what you need tonight. It whether it's a hangnail, God means that means something to God. Whether it's your child that's backslid, whether it's your brother's sister that's not right with God. God cares about your needs and every he'll move for you. He'll bless you. He'll help you. Get a hold of it tonight. And don't let the devil tell you that God ain't gonna move for you. Because he will move for you. I've heard these nations. You got to tell how well you can't have revival and more. Folks, we have revival in every service we gather in here. Now, let me ask you something. What's the price you put on that precious child's life? What's the price? When I looked at her little face, tears running down her little eyes. This morning she stepped out and come down in the aisle, fell into that office. She wasn't ashamed. Nobody hear her praying. What's the price you pay for something like that? We didn't have enough money to buy that. God's the only one who can do that, ain't he, Mike? God's the only one who can set you free, amen, and help you. I'm going to tell you, folks, I, I've never seen nobody grow up like this little fellow right here has in the Lord. Mike, Mike told me way back then, he said, I'm going to get rid of this tobacco. He said, I ain't going to get this smoking in vain, I'm going to quit. And so he just laid him down and quit. And, and then he started reading the Bible through. He's over almost to the end of the New Testament now. And that dude, Mike loves the Lord. He praises God. He worships God. And he's a holding on that he's going to see that boy. We're going to see that boy, ain't we? We're going to take him to McDonald's and buy him some hamburgers and chicken McNuggets and all that good cholesterol. Make him, you know, we're going to take him somewhere, subway.